I want to welcome to you, Excellency, uh, Mr. Pang Sam Chow. I hope I got the pronunciation right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he is the ambassador of uh, Vietnam, uh, one of our friendliest countries in, uh, in Asia. He came here six months ago and uh, he paid a, a visit a few days ago. Then I invited him to come and speak on relations between Vietnam and India. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and coming, Excellency. And, um, uh, friends, uh, the ambassador was born in 1961. He had a very distinguished uh, career. He born in a family of diplomats. He spent a lot of time in the Middle East. And he's been educated in different places in the world. And his uh, biodata is a three page Islam that will give you an idea about the kind of things uh, he would have uh, done in his uh, career. He was closely associated with UNESCO and uh, he was an assistant minister uh, in his country. He worked with his president and prime minister. He did postings in Belgium and many other places. Uh, tonight, uh, the ambassador is going to talk to us uh, about the relations between Vietnam and India. This is very topical because our president, uh, Vice President, Mr. N. Venkaya Naido, will be paying an official visit to Vietnam from the 9th of uh, May onwards. So, you know, that gives us a new spec for uh, the ambassador's uh, visit to the FCC and his. Uh, uh, speech or uh, talk. May I uh, invite uh, Excellency, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. A very good afternoon to all my friends, members of the Foreign Correspondent Club. To give me a tremendous pleasure and honor to be the guest of the club today. I came here a couple of weeks ago and I talked to the management and Mr. Chairman that I would like to come and meet you, uh, but not to give a talk of conventional type. The talk of conventional type, I saw it on the clip, which is still in your website of my predecessor. And uh, I also went through a number of other clips that you interview other ambassadors, but it is not my time. I come here just to entertain you, make a presentation of the beautiful pictures of uh, our two leaders they met 61 years ago. So you can hang over there to enrich your art gallery. And I would like to invite you to enjoy Vietnamese cuisine on exactly the day in our tradition to honor the job of being journalist and correspondent. So please come to this press club on the 19th of June. Uh, because in Vietnam, we have two very important days. The first day we honor all the teachers, regardless of whether you are teachers of elementary school or higher education, professor. All the teachers are honored. And in Vietnam, we also have the second profession. We also honor them, being journalists, our correspondent. Similarly, in Vietnam, uh, in India, in Vietnam, all the journalists need to have accreditation. And that before a very powerful card once you show that card, they have a magical power <laughs> and everybody has to turn to you and help you or uh, entertain you. Uh, but I cannot entertain you in just an amusing way. I need to say something of substance. Uh, tomorrow your vice president is going to visit Vietnam. This is the uh, if vice president that ever have gone to Vietnam, 
and that trip take place within only six months since your current president visited Vietnam in November 2018. It testifies to the depth and intensity of the exchange of high-ranking delegation between our two countries, which means that we are not only cordial, cordial friends, but we are a strategic partner because our two countries decided to uplift uh, the status of our relationship to the status of comprehensive strategic partners. And in our foreign policy, there are only three countries that enjoy that status. In order to give substance to the strategic partnership, leaders of the both countries need to visit more often. So this, uh, in, this is, it is in that context that we are looking forward to welcome your Vice President in Vietnam on his official visit. We appreciate the fact that the Vice President of India decides to pay a visit to Vietnam on the occasions of high election day in India. So he will be the chief guest for Pesach celebration in Vietnam. Pesach is the United Nations Day of Pesach, which is a combination of the birthday, of death day, and enlightenment day of Lord Buddha. It has been recognized by the United Nations, and Vietnam is proud to host for the third time the Pesach day. So nothing is more meaningful than a leader of a country where Lord Buddha was born to come and address the Vesak celebration day as a chief guest with the participation of nearly 2,000 foreign guests and dignitaries and 20,000 followers of Vietnam. And that will be broadcast live in Vietnam. So that is the first thing I want to share with you. We appreciate that. And it's a very right decision to send the dignitary of India to come and to speak on this day, representing a country where the was born. Secondly, I also want to share with you some development as compared to the previous talk of my predecessor in the talk uh, to you by my predecessor, we cover in a very comprehensive manner all the major aspects of our bilateral relations ranging from political cooperation to defense, security cooperation, to economic and trade, and to people and people contact. Today I just want to mention one or two new things which I believe is very important. The first things I want to share with you which changes completely the mindset and understanding and perception by Vietnamese people of India and Indian society. <coughs> that is a famous wedding by a, a son of an industrialist from Bombay. He brought seven VIP of India to an island named Phu Quoc. And uh, the wedding lasted seven days, seven nights, with 11 functions, with 225 performers, actors coming from 10, North, uh, 10 European countries. And most importantly, 50 cook from India. So that news has been uh, covered by all the press in Vietnam, 50 press, I mean, and continuously over one week and even 10 days, and after that. So it's, I believe this is a big shock for the Vietnamese people, in the sense that they never thought of Indian people, Indian society, in that way. 
they didn't know that Indian had so well, a lot of rich people, but they didn't know that Indian people had so good taste in terms of preparation, in terms of the way they dress. They didn't expect Indian to be so uh, to hold so tight family values. Because in the wedding, they see the old people, the young people, and we have a lot of play, uh, video clips showing how an elderly Indian couple bowed and touched the knee of an, a little bit older couple who are their uncle or auntie. And we didn't believe that it's so similar in Vietnam and the family value are more, even more powerful in Indian society. And through that wedding, we can understand the existence of a joint family, which we thought that it exists only in Vietnam. And more importantly, we come to know about your ability to adapt yourself to the modern world, because we do not expect you to be able to dance so well, <laughs> so long, through the whole seven day and seven night. And the most important thing is that we did not expect you to have such a diversity of food. <laughs> so interesting food because we have only uh, a dozen of Indian restaurants in Vietnam. But Indian food is not so popular. But after the wedding, people say, oh, we need to taste Indian food to see how it looks and how it like. And the status of Indian visitors has been uplifted, uplifted in the eyes of immigration people, customer people, and also of the, of the uh, street people. So many people wrote the story about the taxi driver treat Indian visitors quite differently, having listened to all the story of the wedding and what for his own eyes, the fantastic uh, and the beauty of the Indian wedding. And another point I also want to add is that we are pleased to see the ritual of the wedding, which is we normally see only Catholic ritual in our society. So this is a big development that changed completely the mindset of the and the understanding of Indian people. Now we salute you very much in the way that you salute us after our victory over the event. Perhaps the conclusion is a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit exaggerated, but uh, deep down it is. The second good news is that you cannot imagine that our two countries are so close, so natural, but we don't have any connectivity. No air connectivity, no road connectivity. And now it's coming. In two months' time, you will have a direct flight connecting Kolkata and Hanoi. And it takes less than the time flight between Kolkata and New Delhi. Can you imagine that West Bengal is closer to Vietnam and Hanoi than to New Delhi? So, this is a fantastic new. I and my staff have been working very hard on that connected, uh, connectivity. So Indigo will fly, and Indigo will be in Vietnam at the same time with your vice president in order to get the blessing. And hopefully, we have a lot of people travel to Indigo in the next two months. So I'm delighted to announce you that good news and we hope that you will be invited all on the first flight. It's not me who make a decision but I make a recommendation to you to go to invite you to come and to write about them. So this is the second very positive news since my arrival six months ago. The third very positive news as well, uh, we don't have a huge investment from Indian Academy to Vietnam except go and to see. And we don't have any major interaction 
between IT company between Vietnam and And here comes HCL. HCL is coming with a big ambition to create 10,000 jobs in Vietnam. And I asked them the question, why do you choose Vietnam? Of course, I tried to lobby so in order to get them investing in Vietnam. And they say that there are various factors. But one of the most important factors is that Vietnam always stands in top five of PISA, which is education indicators. Vietnamese people are very smart at mathematics, at physics, and they are potentially all that produce good engineers, IT engineers. So they come back and they will train those 10,000 engineers and they will make them work in the interest of India but for American clients. Is it interesting? You see how global we are. Huh? Indian company investing in Vietnam and make all the Vietnamese engineers work for all the people and company in a, another hemisphere. So this is also a very positive development that I want to share. So they also Indigo will together with Indigo so uh, you see here in the next tomorrow uh, the, in the next few days a visit a combination of what of long term traditional friendship which was created by cultural civilizational linkages between our two countries and substantiated by investment into Vietnam by a leading IT company and facilitated by the direct adding operated by Indigo and that will bring thousands and thousands of Vietnamese pilgrimages from Vietnam to India. So ladies and gentlemen, over the past six months so movement has been taking place. I feel that I am very blessed to be ambassador here. It is a very rightful decision of my government to decide to uplift the ambassadorial post here from joint secretary, uh, joint, joint secretary level of the United States, DG level to ministerial level. So in order to substantiate the comprehensive strategic partner between Vietnam and India. Many people ask me, how does India treat me? My answer is that India is treating me so well, far beyond my expectation. Since this is my first encounter with my Asian culture, I was ambassador in Paris before, then I was ambassador in Brussels, in the European Union, then I was assistant minister. I, my background is most of the time in Europe. So India is a lovely blessing that what would that gave me. And I will commit myself to working closely with all partners in India, including all the journalists and correspondents which in Vietnam we honor you every once every year. But in fact, we honor you every day <laughs> in order to make our relations stronger and stronger and take our comprehensive partnership faster forward in order to please our both nations and country. I thank you very much. I am ready to entertain any questions. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Ambassador. Yeah, Lord Buddha has indeed blessed you. Yes. He sent you here, gave a minister's rank, and uh, you introduced, you were going to introduce flights, direct flights to the many Indian way and hopefully a large number of Buddhist pilgrims will visit the Gorga and other places associated with Lord Buddha. And we are also have a strong defense relationship. So I uh, 
now throw the session open to questions. Many people ask about visa application process in the LLC. And I want to inform you with my greatest satisfaction that we are about to launch a platform or process to address visa on the right of so that will be the single authorized gateway for all Indian visitors, not only Indian visitors, but all global visitors who wish to come to Vietnam to click on the website. It takes them less than two minutes to complete the form and the form will send automatically to our concerned authorities. That platform incorporate secure uh, techno technology in order to safeguard maximum all your personal information and data. And it is developed by an Indian company. And that will be, yes, that show how Indian, how powerful Indian is at IT. And will be operated by VFS. So we are working closely with them to launch that, hopefully, on the day we honor you, on the 19th of June. So you, we honor you by inviting you to enjoy Vietnamese cuisine, by having you a number of lucky draw. I hope that I have a number of lucky draw to give you. And by inviting you to try to apply visa on arrival. So one would click that, you don't have to worry, you just pick your visa at the end of the day when you land at the Vietnamese airport. So this is a very good news for all of us. Thank you. And I'm very happy to be here, especially in college times, you know. We used to take out demonstrations in solidarity with the Vietnam. And we used to shout slogans of Tera Nam, Mera Nam, Vietnam, Vietnam. So it's a great occasion for us that you are here. And uh, my name is Arun Goel. I cover a trade for my news service. It's called ABS News Service. And uh, I have this question for you. Would you care to comment on uh, India-Vietnam economic relations, especially in the context of the ASEAN Trade Agreement? under which we are offering zero duty to import from Vietnam. And uh, there is often a charge that a lot of goods of Chinese origin, from China is in your backyard, are being routed through Vietnam. And there is no real value addition in Vietnam. And they are coming into India under the free trade agreement and enjoying zero duty status as against the normal duty in India, for example, the mobile phone, which I cover very carefully, the duty is 20%. And parts of mobiles are also at 10 to 15%. But in the FTA, they are coming into India at zero duty. So would you care to comment if uh, my question is not too technical? Thank you very much. Please. Uh, thank you very much for your questions. But I would like to thank you very much for your sentiment that you have reserved for the Vietnamese people and country. Vietnamese people is a loyal people and it is also a tolerant people. We are ready to let the past go and look forward to the future. With that tolerant attitude, we are able to turn all our former enemy and foe to become friends, even great friends and strategic friends now. Having said that, I want to stress that Vietnamese government and people never, never forget all the kind sentiments, the sense of solidarity expressed and shown by the Indian government and people throughout its long history of struggle against all the imperialists, even the colonialists. So we are grateful and we never forget that and we treasure that. So thank you very much for your sentence. Secondly, about your FTA between India and Vietnam. When I was ambassador in Brussels, I was participating in the 
FTA negotiation team of the Atlantic side. So I understand a little bit about the matter at hand. I wish to underline that thanks to the FTA between ASEAN and India, our both sides, India on one side and ASEAN on the other, have been able to develop and grow our trade substantially. At the moment, uh, the trade value between our two sides stands around 90 billion, and Vietnam and India around 11 billion US dollar per year. So, without the FTA sign between our two parties, our trade would not be able to go in order to reach that level. Additionally, bilaterally, our bilateral relations in terms of trade value has been growing around 35 to 40 percent. And our two leaders have set a target that we will be able to reach that target of 15 billion by 2020. Of course, in the process of doing business, we always we can see this and that. And it is not only in the case of ASEAN and India context, but also in the other context. When I was in Brussels, I have to address a lot of issues that you just mentioned. Originating, certificate of origin, things like that. Therefore, in that process, we observed a new phenomenon in our electoral relations, which is safeguard measures put forward by Indian authorities. Anti-dumping cases, we have 12 cases so far. And recently, we have two cases about anti-subsidies. So, under WTO, we have all this mechanism which allow us to address all the issues that may come up from our FTA. So don't worry, things may happen, but we have mechanism in order to address that in the spirit of the friendship between our two countries and in the way that would protect the legitimate interests of the business of our both sides. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do you see the relationship between India and Vietnam on defense side? We have seen increased engagement when it comes to defense. So, I mean, if you can brief us about the defense side. That question was raised to my predecessor. But if you wish, I will repeat again instead of inviting you to watch the clip. The relationship between India and Vietnam is comprehensive. When I mean comprehensive, it covers five pillars. Political pillar, I mentioned that our two leaders and leaders at different levels, including at the state level, have exchanged frequent visits. We have supported each other on various occasions. Defense and security is the second pillar, which is very important. Trade and economic is the third pillar, just to mention. Scientific book is also another pillar which is important. The fifth pillar is education and people to people contact. Now, what determines the substance and science uh, and defense security cooperation between Vietnam and India as strategy? Because we have 100 million credit line extended by Indian authorities to Vietnamese authorities, mainly that 100 million US dollars per line used are used in order to build the 12 vessels. Five to be built by an Indian company, TNA, and the other seven to be built by them too, but in Vietnam. So this is a joint process of assisting each other. We are under discussion another 500 million US dollar credit line to purchase other military equipment. So the fact that two credit lines, 100 and 500 million, tell everything to see how strongly our military ties are. 
In addition to another fact is that uh, a lot of training by uh, the three um, services of India extended to the three uh, countries of the uh, are underway. We have to train the pilot, we train the supreme people, they have to train all the also training in English, things like that. And they also have a change of top course. So last year, the first day when I came to India, I visited Chennai and went on board of our first Coast Guard vessel, which visited for the first time ever an Indian port, a foreign port. And just two, three weeks ago, we had two ships of India visiting Kanai Port, Kanai Port, India now. So the exchange of visits, of port call, of militaries, uh, of the chief of the three forces between the two countries are very regular. So that is the strong point about So you plan to buy some equipment from India, including missiles from India? as we have seen the ports. That is the decision to be taken by the defense people and then from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But, but can you just confirm, are there any discussions happening? I think that, of course, 500 million is a huge amount and they can discuss anything. I don't exclude any possibility. <laughs> but I'm not for the Ministry of Defense. the ONGC Village Limited has been given permission to look for oil in the, on the coastal area around Vietnam. The Chinese had a problem about that yes. and uh, the uh, permission to OVL was extended to look for oil. What is the status? Have they been able to find any oil? And uh, have the Chinese stopped complaining now? And uh, what would be the duration of the period for which uh, OVL will be allowed to look for oil in your country? According to my source and information, ONGC is doing very well in Vietnam. Of course, in the process of uh, exploration, uh, sometimes they are not fully satisfied with what they expected, or what they found. Uh, but I think everything is on the, on the track. So, uh, and we, uh, we also sent uh, assurance that we, uh, according to the agreement between the two countries, we will try to provide all the necessary support and assistance in order to make sure that not only Indian companies, but all foreign companies which operate in Vietnam will enjoy all the, all the privileges and support necessary of the Vietnamese government. Yes. Ambassador, let me ask you a follow-up question on that. You know, uh, China, of course, has, has its own thinking and view of the, of the seas and waters around China. And it has a variety of you know, differing positions on different parts of China Sea. And uh, how do you now you describe the relationship between India and Vietnam strategically? And I'm sure that in the immediate neighborhood, in the big country like China, to you, you also have, you also enjoy a relationship with them. So how do you balance the relationship that you have with India and, and the one that you have with China? I mean, how do you see the two relationships and does it bother you, does it bother the Chinese or does it bother the Indians or is it going to go and if so, what is it? Very simple. Our foreign policy principle is that Vietnam wishes to be friends with all countries in the world community. And we would like to be a responsible and trusted partner to all countries in the national community. Having said that, over the past uh, three decades, since the introduction of our reform policy, Vietnam has been able to move out from isolation, which imposed by all the hostile forces, to be able to normalize its relations with uh, China, with USA, with ASEAN. We are now a member of ASEAN, uh, signed a cooperation agreement with the European Union. And interestingly, all these countries are now become strategic partners of Vietnam. So 
So when I mentioned that India is one of the three comprehensive strong economies we have, China is also one of the three comprehensive strong economies we have. We are strongly uh, developing the relationship, a good relationship and good neighbor with China. So I don't think there is any issue if Vietnam want to be a good friend with all countries, including all the big, big countries in the world. The third country is the Russian Federation. Well, if there aren't any more questions, uh, may I request you, uh, Excellency, to give us, give us the beautiful picture of what you may Thank you. 